right, so first of all, I want to thank you for taking the time. I know how busy you guys are, and I, I love the set. I love what we're doing here. So here we are at Schimberg Playhouse at the Stratus Performing Arts Center. So tell me a little bit about yourself, David. What is your role here and job site with this production? Well, thank you for having me, first off. Uh, I'm the director of the show as well as the producing artistic director of the company. So we do six shows a year here in the Schimberg Playhouse as a resident theater company. I probably direct maybe about half of them. Uh, and Shakespeare is sort of one of my favorite things to do every year. And uh, so here we are in sort of a representation of modern day Tampa and uh, a very timeless romantic comedy in As You Like It. That's great. And why specifically did you choose As You Like It? There were a couple of reasons. One, um, we were looking for a Shakespearean comedy to do this year. So, you know, that sort of cuts in half of how many choices you have. Um, and I also, when we were looking at picking plays for this season, I kind of had a feeling that everybody come January was going to be a little burnt out no matter how the election went. <laughs> like if it went in your favor, if it went not in your favor. What election? People were going to be burnt out. People uh, were going to be looking for some diversion. Uh, people were going to be looking to maybe you know get away. And uh, one of the things I think about As You Like It that I like as a story is that the whole story is about getting away. About getting away from the city, about getting away from court, about getting away from you know, the drudge of daily life and, and finding themselves in this sort of mystical location of art. And so I thought, you know, I was like, I kind of have a feeling that we're going to be ready for that and we're going to want that. And so that was really the impetus behind picking as you like it. Well, that's, I think that's a great idea. I mean, definitely we need some escapism. Yeah. And, you know, of course, we in the creative arts community, that's what our goal or rather our job is, part of it is to provide that kind of escape for the audience. And I'm sure that you've, are, I know with the reviews I've been reading and the reception that the play has received, you guys have definitely accomplished that. Yeah, people have definitely embraced the show, which is great. Uh, you know, we have one more week left, so hopefully that continues through. And um, we had a completely sold out opening weekend. Times and Creative Loafing were both very kind to us as far as the reviews go, and people really seem to enjoy it. We've had a lot of kids come see the show, which is great. Uh, oh, wow. We, we did six daytime matinees that were all offered to schools at little to no cost whatsoever through some grants we were able to get. And so we had over 600 students from fourth grade through college that have come to see the show. And um, it's been really nice, especially in those uh, the, the fourth through sixth grade years, to see the way that those kids are really embracing the show and really enjoying it um, and, and digging into the language and digging into all the stuff that's going on. That's been, that's been really nice. Great. Cool. So then we've got the fourth graders coming in. Really, it sounds like you have a wide variety of ages that are interested in this production. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I think some of the smallest, uh, I think like six to eight, you know, all the really? way up to 80 plus. I mean, that's, that's wonderful. I mean, because you would think, you know, one of the things that you hear about Shakespeare, especially since I was a drama teacher, one of the biggest struggles we had is to get the kids to understand Shakespeare, but the fact that you right. attack them at such a young age, I mean, that's wonderful. And I think that, you know, that's, I, I think if, if done correctly, Shakespeare is completely understandable, it is completely accessible. Um, it, it's just a matter of knowing how to use the language and knowing how to not only use the language in, in, in the mouth, but in the body. And I think that there's absolutely no reason why the words cannot be intelligible and that people cannot follow. Of course, it's like listening to when you watch a movie and it's in a dialect, like if you're watching a movie and it's like Irish, and it takes you a few minutes to get used to the accent sure. that everybody's using, or you know, no matter what that, that dialect is, and Shakespeare like that is a dialect, and if, if you meet the audience halfway and if you do your work I, uh, and allow them that period of adjustment, they will tune in and they will dig in. And I, I, I firmly believe when people say like, well, why don't you do something in English? It is in English. It is <laughs> in English. Not, it's, it's, English. Right. It's, 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 in a, it's in a meter. It's in a style of poetry that is not the way that people speak. But it's not the way people spoke back then either. Right. Exactly. So, so a lot of people don't realize. Right. It's, it's, a, it's a, they just walk around like that. No. no it's a form of poetry. It's, you know. Exactly. People don't speak in beats like hip hop, right? But we listen <laughs> right. to rap albums and nobody says, I don't understand what they're saying. Well, maybe some people do say that. <laughs> um, but yeah. So let me ask you this, you know, aside from setting it in modern day Tampa, which I love the, uh, the caricature, the, the, you know, kind of the abstract. Right, it's abstracted, yeah. yeah. So uh, aside from doing this, what, what else did you 
do because when you're doing Shakespeare, mm -hmm. you you know there's so many different ways you can do it. You can do it obviously as it well. I don't want to say as it was intended because who knows. But you can right. do it either period or you can just go crazy. I mean, there have been people that have actually done music. Right. Um, so what exactly did you guys do that set it apart? With this production, um, I, I really kept going back to this idea of like right here, right now. This, this need to get away, this need to escape, this need to find yourself, uh, this, this search for love, this search for freeing yourself of, of societal chains and just being who you want to be and be in love and get away. I felt like that was so right here, right now, that that really was the impetus behind right here, right now. So in addition to the, you know, the set really being representative of downtown, uh, we tried our best you know, in, in terms of, of costuming, of making people look like right here, right now, with nods to Tampa in the show. So there's, there are garments that are on stage that people recognize as being Tampa things, uh, props on stage that are Tampa things, like there's goody goody takeout, you know, and <laughs> a copy of Dianetics a dude is reading and stuff oh like that. Oh my that, gosh, that's definitely Tampa. Right, that just kind of keys people into the fact of like, this is right here, right now, and those things help an audience grab onto it. Uh, all the music in the show, every, every note of music in the entire show is all from a local uh, promoter, a local record label, New Granada Records. Uh, and a lot of the bands that are on New Granada Records are also Tampa-based bands. And so all of the music in the show is from them. We actually had one of the bands, Pogo, record uh, our wedding song for the very end of the play. Uh, so it's got original music by Tampa folks in it. There's uh, clothing made by Tampa people, you know, and so we've really tried to put as many things on stage and embrace this community because a personal thing that has nothing to do with Shakespeare. Uh, Tampa spent so long trying to be another city, right? Like Tampa's gonna be the next Portland, Tampa's gonna be the next Austin, mm -hmm. Tampa's gonna let Tampa be the next Tampa, right? Because there's, there's, there's enough here to love and there's enough here to embrace. And so in our own weird little way, it's a little love letter to Tampa at the same time. Yes. So uh, talking about Tampa, talking about, you know, what makes us us, what do you feel makes job site theater different from other theater companies, or what do you guys bring? Oh, we're different because we're us, you know, and other folks are different because they're them. I think that, um, I can only speak in terms of what I think is important to me. Um, I can only speak in terms of what I think, like, where, where we founded ourselves and the kind of work we're trying to do. Um, and, and there are a lot of really great companies in this area that all do sensational work. I think that some of the things that, I like to just think we're a theater company that does cool stuff. like. You know, but if, if, if really kind of pinned into a corner, we tend to do work that, that I find to be politically and socially relevant um, because I think that's important. That doesn't mean it has to be heavy handed. It just, I, I like to know what's at stake. And, and for me, most of the time that I go to the theater, I want to see something where something is at stake. Does that mean I don't sometimes just want to go and laugh and have a good time and that's it? No, that doesn't mean that. But I'm more attracted to the work that has something to say about the human condition, that has something to say about the crises we're facing right now, that has something to say about our, our you know, political and, and social moments that are going on. So we try to find that work. Um, I think maybe I personally have a bit of a darker or offbeat sense of humor, so I think that's often reflected in the kind of work we do. A lot of times people say that they come here and they see things that are off the beaten path or they're, you know, a little, the, 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 the dark comedy. Yeah, we probably do a little bit of that too. Um, and for me, above all that, like, so all that stuff really also goes to the fact that I want to be a place for everyone to come and enjoy theater. Like, I think that we've done a really bad job of making theater accessible to regular people. Because, like, we're the choir. We don't need talking into going to shows, right? right. But, but to talk to someone else and say, hey, you should come see this play, uh, you start to see the look on their face. They're like, oh, guys. And it is a lot of work to go to the theater. It is hard. Absolutely. It's hard. It's hard to carve out time and say, I'm going to be at this specific place at this specific time. Right. And, you know, do I need to dress up or not? Is there going to be parking? I probably got to go out and get something to eat beforehand. Mm -hmm. Do I need to get a babysitter? Like, oh, and they don't want me on my phone and I can't talk. And, like, all these things that are barriers Absolutely. to people coming to the theater, which, you know, some of those are legit. And, and so if we're going to demand of people to carve out time in their schedule, to pay money for a ticket, to come sit in a dark room and be quiet and disengage 
from all the gadgets for a couple hours. We need to meet them halfway and do things they want to see. At the same time, we challenge them with the things we think they need to see. Right? And so that's, I want to be a place for that. I want to be a place where, where you know, whether you're a 20-year-old musician or a 30-year-old cook or a 70-year-old banker, that you can come here and have a good time. And I think that that's, I don't know, I don't know if that's what sets us apart, but that's, these are some of the things that are really important to me. Um, I wear t-shirts and shorts in my own theater all the time. It's like, right, I, I'm not getting dressed up for this. No. Uh, You're you. I, I want to be comfortable, and I want other people to be comfortable. When sure. people say, well, I'm coming to the show, do I need to dress up? And I'm like, if you want to. Like, if, if you'd rather, no, but you know, honestly, like, when people come here, you'll see people that look like everything. Uh, you'll see people in a coat and a tie because maybe they just got off work, or maybe they're going out to a fancy dinner. As you like it. Or maybe that's just how yeah. they dress, right? And then right. on the other side of that, you're going to see people in flip flops and, you know, shorts. But okay. that's even perfect. It's right. even I, more perfect for this particular production because you're, it's, you're showing people from here and right. you're getting people from here. Right. And, you know, I mean, that's so let me ask you this, you know, you're talking about disconnecting from the devices and, and how theater is playing a part in that. Um, you know, one of the things that, that makes theater so um, really powerful is the fact is how it has stayed the course through the generations and through the centuries. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've been banned. We've been, well, killed mm -hmm. I mean, burned at the stake. Uh, you name it, and, and we've all, a, a lot of the artists, you know, Moliere, Shakespeare himself, you know, Brecht, uh, Chekhov, you name it, you know, they had to, uh, in a sense, reinvent, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, one of the things I, I find very impressive about you guys specifically is that, you know, you kind of took the idea of performance to kind of the next level, because I remember one of the things when you guys first started out was you were actually performing in the job place. In mm -hmm. the workplace, and that's not something that was really. I mean, yeah, sure, people were doing it, but not to the point you guys were doing it. Right. Well, and that was that was by just. I mean, that was by need at first. We didn't have a home, so it was like wherever we could do a show, we do it there because, right? That's just exactly okay. Where 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 can we do it? Hey, it's a venue. So we really thought we were going to be more of a site specific theater company that did work like you know wherever wherever the place was that we could get. That was going to be the job site. That was the whole uh, impetus behind the name. Um, but you know, then when we were offered residency here, it's like we do have a home now, um, and we don't tend to get out as much and do sort of these little one-off things in weird places anymore. But now that our regular series is is doing so well, we're looking for ways. Okay, how can we get back to that, and how can we start doing sort of strange satellite things, fringe type things, and and one-off events that are more immersive? Because then you're taking theater to where people are already at. And you're surprising them to a degree. Right. Now, I don't mean like weird booby trapping, no, 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 performance art stuff, but you know, we've done, uh, we did a, a we, we brought in and produced a beer themed uh, history show at a brewery, and you know, people loved it. And then they were like, we really like this. We had such a good time. And I'm like, well, then come to the theater and watch what we do because right, we do this right. stuff all the time, you know. Um, or some of these uh, larger art events, like there used to be Gala Carina, which doesn't happen anymore, but it used to bring together musicians and theater people and visual artists and. You know, whatever we can do to, to continue to be in front of people because we're here. We're here all year long, um, and we're here for everybody. So that's wonderful. And so, uh, so let, uh, so the show as you like it. It's, it's, uh -huh. uh, can you tell us a little more? Like what? When is it going to be on? When is it going to close? Yeah, it closes Sunday. So well, few days, guys. Get your tickets. Get your tickets. Get your tickets. Get your tickets. Uh, so it runs through Sunday. There are performances tonight, tomorrow, and Saturday at eight. Sunday at four is our last show, um, and it is it's it's a it's a it's a beautiful play. It's great. I think um, it's got the best role in all of Shakespeare written for a woman in it, in, in the character oh, of Rosalind. Easily, uh, it's it's a, a great play. It has a lot of stuff to say about love. It has a lot of great stuff to say about finding yourself and being yourself and and. and Living the way you want to live, whether that's in the country or in the city, or you know, however those things are, um, and it's super fun. It's super funny. There's a lot of music in it, live music. There are uh, songs that are sung a cappella. There are songs accompanied by guitar on ukulele. You know, there's this thing, ukulele, right? We've got a ukulele number in it. Um, so, in in a way, you know, it's kind of a it's it's definitely a romantic comedy, but it's also sort of a musical comedy at the same time because there's enough music in it that, that that's all going on. Um, and uh, you know the same thing. Like I, I like what the Tampa Bay Times. I can still say Tampa Bay Times. I like what the Tampa Bay Times said in that 
Uh, you know, it's got a little something for everyone in it. Because it does. There's like wrestling matches, right? We've got like cool that's what well, we're actually sitting on the wrestling. Match. I was gonna say this That's why this feels is a little, why it's a little squishy, yeah. right? So we've got some wrestling stuff that happens over here, there's music, uh, there's broad physical comedy, there's love, there's you know, a girl in a pink wig and cat ears. I noticed, yeah, I saw that. that that's great. Uh, I mean that's that's also so Tampa though. Yeah, right. So, so I think it, it definitely has a little something for everybody. I, I think um, people that, that, that uh, will come to it will definitely have a good time, will definitely enjoy themselves, will definitely laugh. And, you know, I think uh, the play ends in a quadruple wedding. So, you know, even more than regular Shakespeare comedies where it ends in a wedding, this ends with four pairs of people getting married. Yeah. So it's a feel-good show. People are going to leave happy. People are going to leave feeling good. Um, so. Early Valentine's Day thing, bring your girlfriend, boyfriend, significant other, person you would like to be date with. Person with cat ears. Person with cat ears. <laughs> I know, I think it's definitely a perfect time for doing it. And speaking of that, what other, so what else are you guys going to be doing for the year? Anything coming up? Well, uh, my next show is actually off site. I'm doing, I'm freelancing for the first time in like 10 years. Oh, and wow. uh, so I'm directing Annie Baker's The Aliens over at Stageworks Theater and Channel Side. That actually goes up next week. So that opens on the 10th, uh, and then the next thing Job Site's doing is a, a pitch black Irish comedy by Martin McDonough called The Skull and Connemara. Ooh. And so that's a super fun, super dark comedy show. It's about a guy who is, it's, it's set in very rural West Country Ireland where there's like 30 people that live there and everybody knows everybody else's business. Uh, and they joke, it's a part of a trilogy of plays where they call the city the murder capital of Europe, basically, because all the people come to weird ends that live in this town. Mm -hmm. And so there's this guy whose job is every year to go clean out part of the crypt to make room for the new bodies that are coming in by smashing up the bones Ooh, wow. to move them back, which is a real thing that happens yeah, in small towns, right? Like, yeah. so they gotta, they gotta make room. So they take the oldest bodies once a year and smash them up so they can fit more bodies in. And it's now been seven years uh, since the death of his wife uh, and his wife died in sort of this mysterious set of circumstances. Mm -hmm. And everything begins to come back up about whether or not he was possibly involved with the murder of his wife. Oh, boy. So the play's kind of about that, right? Interesting. And uh, I'm actually in that play. I play the cop who's kind of poking around and looking Interesting. at stuff. Interesting. Oh, so you're acting in it. Right, I'm acting in it, which I don't do very much anymore, but that's nice. Um, I've actually acted in all three of these Irish plays. Uh, I wonder why. Oh, you like doing it. Right, and I like yeah. So that's what's up for job site, and uh, Skull and Conamera opens on March 9th? No, 12th. March 12th. Cool. And, this, and, but as and that'll you be like in it, yeah. As You Like It is here until Sunday. As You Like It is here until Sunday. And if somebody wants tickets, all they have to do is go to, uh, I think it's StratusCenter.org. You can go to StratusCenter.org or our website, JobSiteTheater.org, and take a look around. we got a lot of really cool videos. You can get a feel for the show, feel for the music. Uh, uh, the most recent videos that are up right now have quotes from the papers and what people are talking about the show. And anything you want, it, you can find at jobsitetheater.org. Uh, so we have study guides for the plays. We have like you know every cast and crew information. Anything you want to know about anything to do with the show, you can find at jobsitetheater.org. Great. There you go, guys. There you have it. So I want to thank you so much. Yeah, thank for you for your time. Yep. And, and you know, break a leg well. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Tap out. Yep.